what are the best diabetic diets to follow for long-term success? Could the biggest mistake of choosing the right diet be based on psychological influences? The latest research has shown there are eight important factors to consider when choosing that life-saving diet. We will cover all of that plus more today. But before we begin, let me welcome all of you resilient diabetics out there. This is the channel we turn ordinary struggling diabetics into extraordinary well control diabetics. If you don't know who I am and you are brand new to this channel, I welcome you. My name is Jay Sampat and I became an insulin dependent diabetic a little over six years ago due to an autoimmune attack which caused the destruction of my pancreas as a result of a severe gluten allergy response. So basically, I am the proud owner of a pancreas that has gone on a permanent and lifelong vacation. So not only am I a diabetic just like you, where we will be walking that walk and talking that talk together, but I do also have a University of Bachelor of Science degree in nutrition dietetics, and that does come in very handy in helping discuss all the intricacies of being a diabetic. But don't forget, you have to hit that subscribe button followed by the gray notification bell and then choose turn on all notifications if you want to be notified when the next Resilient Diabetic video has been published. As with all of my videos, this should not be considered personal medical advice. This is my interpretation of the latest research. If you want medical advice, please always consult your physician. Our number one goal as diabetics, regardless of type, is finding ways to control blood glucose levels. Along with physical activity and medication, the long-term eating plan that we choose plays the single most important role when it comes to the amounts of insulin needed, thus bodily inflammation and sickness, and it dictates overall blood glucose variations that you and I experience throughout the day. So this is not a discussion on the short-term weight loss plans that are often called diets, but the well-formulated long-term plan to aid in both glucose control and overall health. Once diagnosed and over the years of trying to battle and control this disease, you will be faced with a multitude of different diets, all claiming to resolve these complicated issues that we as diabetics face on a daily basis. And as of today, I'll list several of the most popular eating plans that you will encounter for not only diabetes management, but weight loss too. And what would that include? Well, it's a long list, but we have the top. Those would include the low carb, low calorie diet, the carbohydrate counting diet, the paleo diet, the vegan diet, the South Beach diet, the Mediterranean diet, the raw food diet, the Atkins diet, the zone diet, the ketogenic diet, the vegetarian diet. We even have the Weight Watchers diet. New ones popping up all the time, just cleverly rehashed and remarketed to cash in on the trends. We've discussed Alzheimer's and the direct link to sugars and high circulating insulin levels. So what do we have now? The Mind diet and one called the Blood Type diet and even the fasting diets have to be accounted for. There is this boom of doctors writing books on diets that cure diabetes, or they even medical doctors. As they say, buyer beware. However, many are actually medical doctors, but if they were diabetic themselves, then they would know two things. One, they would not be able to walk the walk and control their own blood sugars with their advice given. Second, they would also realize that diabetes cannot be cured. It can only be controlled. What do you have to be aware of first? It is how you are influenced to choose one diet over the other. We as diabetics now turn to the internet in droves because our healthcare institutions have simply let us down. From our bought off and paid off healthcare institutions who refuse to change as the world around them is dying, getting sicker and sicker, and may I remind you, one in three here in the United States is now pre-diabetic. To our doctors who are to care for us with a disease, diabetes that revolves solely around diet, 
when most doctors have not even had a single nutrition course throughout their entire training in medical school. Doctors are not paid to be curious and to ask questions that solve our diseases. That's our job as a diabetic. They are taught and trained to treat and medicate the illness. This massive vacuum leaves our community confused, dazed, and completely vulnerable. So it's no wonder we are searching for answers. And one of the newest and most popular ways is through the internet, self-chat, and help forums. Where if you noticed, many of the forums defend their stance or way of treating the disease against all other ideas. They will even ban you if you challenge their notions of one bill fits all. If you're on a keto forum, don't even mention you prefer to have a high protein intake. So the first thing we have to consider when deciding on the right diet and protocol is related to a concept called the psychology of the tribe. This will influence you more than you know. It gave people a name in addition to their own social meaning in a chaotic world. It made the environment less disorienting and dangerous. Human nature hasn't changed. We just now go to the internet for that. People tend to surround themselves with like-minded individuals and they also yearn to be part of the best. A sports fan, a combat soldier, going to an elite college, a religious sect, a fraternity, a car club, and in our case, become part of a one-sided form closed off to what is changing around them. At our core, we humans are tribal. Constantly, our subconscious is bombarded with the cues that identify us versus them. The psychology of the tribe shows that when we are surrounded by people who agree with us, our views grow more unshakable and extreme. We tend to delegitimize those who are different and provide different views. Such groupthink is powerful for rallying action around a single idea, but it's terrible when we need to brainstorm for novel solutions. That, of course, is the challenge every diabetic faces. So one has to first note if bias has occurred based on groupthink. Then and only then are you free to think for yourself. It is your life that we are talking about here. So whichever eating plan you choose to follow, the keys to long-term success come down to a number of factors. Based on the latest research, what factors have to be present for a diet to work for a diabetic to remain healthy and complication-free for the rest of their life? I'll set up more videos related to some of the topics with specifics in the description box below. First, the diet must easily be able to keep your A1Cs around 5.6 range and lower. Based on the gold standard doctors I respect and follow, they want all their diabetic patients in the fours, including type 1s and insulin dependent diabetics. An A1C of around 5.6 is the upper limit where irreversible damage begins to occur starting with the nervous tissue and the brain. The video, How Long Can You Live With Diabetes? in the description box below will go into all those details. Second, a diet must prevent pancreatic burnout. Once diagnosed, one has to remember there are both resistance issues and damage to the pancreas. The pancreas for many diabetics has been overworked and is failing. So diets that have a greater percentage of carbohydrates will over time, even with a control A1C, make your diabetes worse down the road. It still puts too much pressure on the pancreas. Third, a diet that requires the least amount of insulin. Hyperinsulinemia or high circulating insulin levels are the driver for all the metabolic diseases around the world, from heart disease, high blood pressure, to now even Alzheimer's. I'll add two more videos in the description box below to cover the direct links, diabetes and blood pressure, and type 3 diabetes, Alzheimer's, and dementia. Fourth, a diet you can maintain for the rest of your life. Diabetes comes with a learning curve, so the diet cannot be complicated, but it does have to be enjoyable and repeatable. It begins with the experimentation of how different a food affects blood sugars. For example, what is the difference between a green and a red bell pepper? Quite a bit, actually. Fifth, 
you do not want a diet that causes excessive amounts of hunger. If you're hungry all the time, you will fail as a diabetic, plain and simple. Weight fluctuations will only make your diabetes worse. I know this is sixth, but in my opinion, it is the single most important macronutrient for a diabetic. Is protein the main component of the diet? It is vital for maintaining muscle tissue as we age. If you're new, you thought I was gonna say carbohydrates. I'll put another link in the video, diabetes and protein, in the description box explaining why. Seven, does the diet keep your blood sugars flatlined, constant and controlled? You want a diet where you know over time exactly where your blood sugars are without even checking. You do not want these violent swings day in and day out. That would lead to continuing worsening of your diabetes. Eighth, a diet limited to nutrient-dense carbohydrates. What are nutrient-dense carbs? Carbs that have substantial amounts of vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, but are very, very low in calories and carbohydrates. Whichever diet you go with, I want you to think rationally and uncomplicate things. I like to use examples that expose some of the truths, but in a crude way. This will help you understand why you have to take the bulls by the horn immediately and control those tugging forces all around you. Say you're a patient in the hospital who's just been diagnosed with cirrhosis of the liver from too much alcohol. So the doctor states, well, we can't have you drinking any more vodka, but we will allow you to have one can of light beer with every one of your meals. Would that make any sense to you? Or say you've been diagnosed with lung cancer and the doctor says, we can't quite have you smoking a full pack a day, but we'll allow you to have four light cigarettes a day. Now let's take the patient who's now been diagnosed with diabetes. What's going to directly kill the patient? Carbohydrates. So the doctors say, we can't quite have you drinking those four cans of soda per day, but yes, you can have that bowl of brown rice and even that whole grain vegan bread for dinner and a piece of fruit for dessert. You know what? Go ahead and use as much insulin as you need. Since you've been following me and you are subscribed, then you already know that that can of soda, that bowl of rice, and even that vegan bread, once absorbed into the bloodstream, will have the same exact amounts of sugars. They are all the same. I will also set up a playlist for you at the end of this video directly on metformin. Why I, as an insulin-dependent diabetic, use this medication, why it is generally given as the first line of treatment in diabetes, and one video specifically on weight loss and metformin. If you're on your desktop or laptop, I want you to click this upcoming box. If you're on your mobile device, I want you to tap that with your fingers. The first is the link to subscribe to this all-important channel. The second is the link to the playlist mentioned on metformin. So, have a great and productive day, and we will see you soon with another new episode, which are generally released weekly. Bye for now.